Hello and welcome to today's lesson on upthrust. In this lesson, we'll begin by outlining pressure differences in fluids. This will lead us to understand how a resultant force acts upwards in fluids. Finally, we'll then outline the effects of this force, known as upthrust, and its applications. So far, you understand the equation for pressure and know how to calculate pressure difference. Building on this foundation, we can now introduce the concept of upthrust. Understanding upthrust will advance our knowledge of fluid dynamics and forces, providing deeper insights into how objects interact with liquids and gases. Let's get started. Have you ever noticed how things feel lighter in the water? This effect is due to the difference in pressure exerted on different parts of the object. The bottom of the object being deeper underwater experiences more pressure than the top. This difference in pressure causes a resultant upward force. This upward force is what we call upthrust or buoyant force. Upthrust is the force exerted by a liquid or gas that opposes the weight of an object immersed in it. If the upthrust is equal to or greater than the object's weight, the object will float. If the upthrust is less than the object's weight, the object will sink. This is why boats and ships can float even though they are very heavy. The water provides an upthrust that balances their weight. To quantify upthrust, we use Archimedes' principle. What is Archimedes' principle? Archimedes' principle states that the magnitude of the upthrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. For example, suppose you have an object immersed in water and it displaces a volume of water with a weight of 50 newtons. In that case, the upthrust on the object is 50 newtons. With this in mind, another way of thinking about floating is in terms of density. Density is defined as mass per unit volume. An object's density in relation to the density of the fluid it is placed in plays a crucial role in determining whether it will float or sink. If an object has a lower density than the fluid, it displaces enough fluid to equal its weight before being completely submerged. Thus it floats. If an object has a higher density than the fluid, it cannot displace a sufficient volume of fluid to counteract its weight, causing it to sink. For example, a piece of cork floats on water because the density of cork is much lower than that of water. Conversely, a stone sinks in water because its density is higher. Additionally, even if two objects have the same mass, their shape and volume can influence their buoyancy. Objects with larger volumes tend to displace more fluid, which can increase upthrust, whereas objects with smaller volumes tend to displace less fluid, which can decrease upthrust. Shape also affects how fluid flows around the object, which can influence the ease with which it displaces fluid. Consider an example where you have a lump of clay. If you shape it into a ball, it might sink because it does not displace enough water quickly. However, if you shape the same clay into a bowl-like structure, the volume it displaces increases and it can float. Understanding upthrust is crucial in explaining many real-world phenomena and is vital for various engineering applications. For example, engineers utilize the concept of upthrust to design vessels that can float and navigate through water efficiently. Similarly, when designing hot air balloons, the principle of upthrust helps in understanding how the balloon will rise as the hot air inside it provides an upward, buoyant force. In today's lesson, we delved into the concept of upthrust, a crucial principle within fluid dynamics and forces. We began by understanding the pressure differences in fluids and how these differences create a resultant upward force known as upthrust or buoyant force. We learned that upthrust acts against the weight of an object immersed in a fluid, determining whether the object floats, remains suspended or sinks. To quantify upthrust, we explored Archimedes' principle, which states that the magnitude of the upthrust on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object. Finally, we discussed the practical applications of upthrust, from the design of ships and submarines to the operation of hot air balloons and the behavior of bubbles in fluids. Our exploration of upthrust not only helps in explaining everyday phenomena, but also underscores its importance in various engineering and scientific contexts. Watch the rest of the GCSE Physics course at Sophos Education.